In this video, I'm going to show you how to design a simple bird flyer in PizzleLab and how to implement some specific features in PizzleLab. Probably you may not have used it before, but in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use those features and also how to design this simple bird flyer. So if you want to learn how to use these features and also learn how to design this bird flyer, then you probably have to watch this video from now up to the end and grab every concept for yourself and without wasting much time let's jump into it so i'm going to clear off everything over here probably start from the scratch like this and what we have to do now is to set our background and start our work right away so i'm going to delete this test and after that i'm going to change the background color to let's say something like this blue black good so after this i'm going to import my first image that i'm going to use for the background so i'll tap on import and I just have to pick it up quickly and bring it inside so let me have a look at it good it is right here and i'm going to use the one is to one aspect ratio which is a squared so i'm going to tap on a check mark after this and i have to use the relative size to actually position these elements like this after this i'm going to reduce the opacity of it just to make sure it blends with the background a little bit i think 16 percent is okay so after this i'm going to lock the layer and at this point we can go ahead and do other things that we want to do so uh watch what i'm going to do carefully from this point because it's something you really have to pay attention to right so i will import a shape like this and tap on this to select this tri triangular shape over here and i have to increase the size of it okay I'll increase the size of it let's say to something like this okay I think this is okay and what I have to do at this point is to reduce the opacity of this and move down to stroke increase the stroke a little bit let's say six and after that I'll move down to blur radius and I'm going to increase it to let's say something like this 14 so what I have to do at this point is to change the color so I'm going to use a color like that of the pink over here like this okay so at this point, I have to play with the stroke size and stuff to make sure the color is kind of beeping, right? It shouldn't be dull. And I think, let me see, um, this should be fine. This should be fine. So the blur radius and the stroke size must go hand in hand for you to get a perfect effect that you are looking for. So I think 14 and stroke size of 17 is okay. And I'm going to tap on a check mark over here. Good. So this is what I'll be having over here. And I need to rotate it this way. And put it over here. So at this point, what I'm going to do is to go ahead and use, you know, uh, the masking tool to cut off part of this shape. So watch this carefully as well as I cut off part of this shape. Okay. And I hope you are actually learning something out of this. So uh, let me do this quickly before I do any other thing else. And I think we are already on point. Good. I think this should be okay for us now. What I'm going to do now is to make a duplicate of this. So I'm going to tap on copy and tap on edit after that. So at this point, I'm going to reduce the blur radius to zero and I'm going to reduce the stroke size as well. So let's say five and I'm going to change the color to white. So this is what I'll be having. Let's tap on a check mark and you know, we have to position it on the previous one just like this. Okay, so perfect. This is what we are actually looking for. And what we have to do now is to actually position these two elements at the middle so i'm going to tap on the relative position tool and use this particular one to make sure it's at the middle and the top one over here so let's do that quickly uh i think i just have to bring this one back here and just position it at the middle like this and select the second one too which is the one with the stroke being bled all right so i'm going to position that one too to the middle like this and probably use the position tool to bring it back onto this one perfectly at this point i think it's pretty cool over here 
So what I'm going to do is to merge the two. So I'm going to select the two like this and tap on merge. Merge them like this. And after that, I can push it to the other side of the work like this. Okay. So now I can go ahead and make a duplicate of this. So I'll just tap on copy and I'll be good to go. So I'll tap on copy and I'm going to leave this one over here like this. Then I'll tap on copy again. Leave it over here like this. Then probably tap on copy again just to make sure I have another version of it over here as well. Okay, I, I actually hope we are following this tutorial, okay? It is simple, but you have to take your time to achieve this effect, okay? So I'm going to lock all these layers currently. I'm going to lock everything over here and this is what we'll be having over here, okay? So at this point, what we have to do is to bring in the person's image, the person's, uh, the person whose flyer we're actually designing, we have to bring the person's image. So I have actually worked on the background of the person already. Take note, this is one Indian pl player that I'm using for this tutorial, okay? And just a quick disclaimer, this is just a tutorial for educational purpose only. This is not his birthday. I am just using his picture for educational purpose and nothing more, nothing less, okay? So I'm going to actually work on it this way, put it over here. And if I want to use the color filter to actually add some effects to it, I'll probably do that, okay? So let's see how we can play with the effects over here. I think this should be okay for me. I think I like this kind of uh, color filter. And uh, what I'm going to do is to tap on, you know, this layer icon and lock the, the layer, right? So after locking the layer, I can go ahead and bring in other elements that I'm supposed to bring in. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to tap on these stickers over here. After tapping on it, I'll increase the size of this and tap on empty area in my working space, not the check mark. Take note, I'm tapping, let's say this place, this place which is an empty area. Okay, I'll tap it like this. After that, I'll tap on this element again to select it. So from here, I can go ahead and tap on color and give it color, you know, the pink that we used for the previous work, that's exactly the same thing I'm going to use over here. So I'm just increasing the size of this currently. After increasing the size of it, you tap on a check mark and push it to the back of the way. So I'm going to tap on to back, All right? So the best thing to actually do over here, if you don't want to tap on to back, Okay, let me just explain the principle behind what I'm doing for you to understand before I do any other thing. What I'm doing is to make sure that this element at the top over here comes below this picture, okay? So instead of tapping onto back, which you send it to the far bottom, I'll just drag it over here and bring it here. Then I'm good to go. All right, so I can now lock this layer since I will not be using it right now. Pretty much that is it for that part okay so the next thing that we have to do is to enter other elements as well probably a shape so this shape uh this is how we're going to work on it we're going to give it a gradient color and probably this gradient type like this okay and we can stretch it just to make sure we are having something good to work with okay so we can tap on a plus sign just to make sure your gradient is on point it shouldn't be tilted it should be on point guys it should be on point perfectly so i think this is okay and i'm going to tap on a check mark and also play with the opacity a little bit so i'm going to reduce the opacity let's say to something like this and i'm going to rotate it rotate this particular element over here like this and put it here Okay, so I'll make a duplicate of it as well and put the duplicate at the top here like this. Okay, and the, the last duplicate I'm going to make is this and I have to rotate it this way. I have to rotate it like this and put it on a person's face. Okay, this is just a simple effect I'm trying to add to this flyer, something like this, okay. So pretty much I'm going to reduce the opacity of it 
and little bit just to make sure we are getting something uh, perfect okay so let me just work on the rotation a bit and I think at this point we are pretty much cool to go okay however you could say that the gradient or the grid the gradient we've added it is kind of showing too much at the other side so I just want to reduce it a little bit and the second one too I have to reduce it a little bit okay so take note of how we are playing around with the gradients and next time you are using them you apply them correctly so at this point I'm just going to write happy birthday so first of all write happy and probably I'm going to use photography signature font for this one so let me scroll down photograph signature font is here and that's what I'm going to do uh, going to use so I have to increase probably the size of it a little bit then bring it here okay let me see if I can work on the padding of it a little bit yeah I think this is okay so at this point I'm going to enter the test uh, birthday and for this birthday I'm going to use Montserrat black for it hopefully so birthday I'm going to make it capitalize and I want to select the font Montserrat black for it so I'm just uh, uh, going to bring it down here like this and pretty much we are almost done so just watch this video and see the next thing that I'm going to do after entering this uh, birthday test over here so I'm giving a size of 30 and I think it should be a little bit bigger okay so I think the 40 42 there about is not bad and I'm equally going to increase the size of the happy as well at this point I think we are pretty much on point now good so the next thing that we have to do is to enter probably the person's name first or you enter a shape okay there are two ways to do this but I'm going to just enter a shape and use it for this tutorial okay maybe in my other tutorial I'll show you another way to equally do the same thing okay I literally don't want this video to keep long that's why I just have to you know talk about the, the first method over here and probably talk about the second one in my other video okay I think the size of the shape is kind of okay now let's see how it looks okay perfect it's not bad over here let's just bring it down a little bit and I know you already know the reason why we are actually bringing it down a little bit okay so at this point all that we have to do is to enter the person's name and probably I'm going to use the Montserrat block for this so I'm going to tap on edit then enter the person's name so this like I said is an Indian player and I think the name is Sanil uh, Chetri I think I got the name right <laughs> so yeah I'm going to change the color to that of the blue black we used for the background and probably reduce the size of it to fit perfectly onto the shape we inserted and that will be pretty much it for this tutorial so let me see if it's perfect on this over here good I think this is pretty much cool this is pretty much cool yeah the test we've entered is on it well and if you have a logo you can actually place the logo somewhere here uh, I think let me just enter a test like a uh, logo here so assuming you have a logo you can just place the logo over here and it will make the work look kind of popping right so yeah at this point just go ahead and save your work and start publishing it okay so i actually hope you find this video helpful and if you do don't forget to hit that like button and also subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications so that each and every time i upload a new video you get to receive a notification all right so this is gosu here from serene arts and i hope to see you in my next video bless up